Okay, so our job for today is basically to complete the exercise that we started last week, where we tried to, where we started to um, connect the client side with the server side. Mm? Up to now, we only did the easy parts, that was the get uh, methods, where uh, we only are reading data from the server, and uh, uh, today we spent uh, some time to uh, try to integrate also the modification methods and try to understand you know, how they can be done um, and what are the best practices for doing that. There are several options that we'll discuss during the implementation. I just remind you that uh, our new friend is the user effect hook. Okay. Uh, we uh, basically only used it in a, in a simple way where, by schedule, up to now, by scheduling a callback uh, at the mounting time of a component. So we didn't have any dependencies in the part of the implementation that we did last week. Uh, I just remind you, remind you that user factor uh, specifies a callback function that can be called, uh, it will be called uh, when the component uh, mounts uh, and whenever any of the dependency changes. Uh, and the change of the dependency is based on the identity of the object representing that dependency. Okay, we'll see the implication of this in more detail today, basically. And um, so that we had these the three options. Uh, very seldom we need to, we, we can leave out also the dependency array, and in this case, the effect is run every time the uh, component is rendered. It's not very useful because we don't have any control over when the component is rendered, so we, have, we will have no control over when the effect is, uh, um, is called. And this is a way of saying we have an unpredictable side effect, which is not an easy sentence to say to a computer engineer. Um, and uh, the two normal cases is just the, having the empty array for doing something at mount time of the, of the component. And so we must be perfectly clear about uh, uh, when the component is mounted. So if the component is just updated, we are updating the props, or we are destroying and recreating a new one, and so the effect will run again. Uh, this is something that we already saw before, but now it becomes more important because we are doing operation on the servers, operations on the server, uh, depending on when the component is mounted. Mounting the component is not something that uh, mm, React can do uh, at, at its own wishes. It depends on how we, re we render the component, okay? When we change the key or when we render a component in a position where it wasn't there before, that is an explicit, explicit mount uh, operation, and so the effect will be called. Mm -hmm. So we must just be aware of, of the difference between updating a component and recreating a component uh, by creating a new one and maybe destroying the previous one. Mm -hmm. And the normal case is when we want uh, the effect to run many times during the lifetime of a single component. And in that case, we should provide the dependency, the variables that will, uh, for which a change of these variables will trigger a new execution of the, of the effect itself. Um, and we started to mention last time, and we see better today, that uh, this list of variables should include every variable that is used inside the effect code. Uh, uh, this is effect is a callback, this callback is a closure of the sermon environment. Uh, so everything that is imported from the, through the closure, from the surrounding environment into the callback function should also be a dependency. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, we are risking of uh, going forward with the, uh, um, values which are not updated to the last value. So something changes and uh, uh, the change is uh, not reflected by the effect because uh, the, 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 the callback will not be called if we don't have a full uh, dependency array. Mm. Um, okay, so this was the, the, the basic case. Uh, and of course, use state and use effect uh, go well together. We already uh, saw that uh, by loading the initial components. Um, uh, so inside the user effect function, if we are loading something from outside, from the server, for example, then inside the effect callback, uh, we have a new value to update 
uh, the, the, the state of the component. So inside the user effect, it's normal uh, to call a set state function. So in this case, it was easy just uh, with a timeout instead of a fetch, but the idea is the same. We are doing something, we are scheduling something that will happen asynchronously. So sooner or later, we will have some data available. And uh, at that point, uh, uh, we are in an asynchronous callback. So we don't have the direct uh, control over the rendering of the component. Basically, the rendering already happened time ago. So if we want to you know, have the new value and uh, make that the new value can affect in some way the component, the only option we have inside the callback is to set a state. So the way in which the effect can communicate to the component is just by changing, by changing a state variable, by scheduling a state change, basically. Okay? So it's normal that inside this effect, when we have the result, uh, we can call a set state uh, for updating the state of a component. Of course, updating the state of the component will happen through a new render of the component itself. And also, we should be careful um, that uh, uh, re-rendering the component uh, would also possibly trigger the effect a second time. So uh, what we are seeing here, for example, is uh, an effect that will set a, a Boolean state. Okay? So the state starts with false, and uh, the effect we always run at the component mounting time. So we always run once, at least. Okay? So what we're doing is that to schedule a function, a callback, after 500 milliseconds, to schedule the open state to become false. It was already false. Okay? So what happens is that after 500 milliseconds, nothing, nothing will happen because we have a set, set open to false and the open is already false. The open variable has been changed because we have a set open, has been, say, not changed, updated. But it has been updated to the same values before, so there is no change. There is no change, so the effect will not uh, be triggered. Right? Okay. Then we also have another uh, event tender. So this is a normal event tender uh, bound to the on-click event uh, of, a, of a portion of the page. Okay? So when the user clicks uh, on this part of the page, uh, the open me function is called, uh, and uh, that will schedule this uh, set open to true. It's a normal state change due to the user action. What happens is that the component, of course, will re-render because we change, okay, the state is scheduled, the state change is scheduled, so after a while, uh, the state will be updated. It will become true instead of false, right? So the component will render again, and it will render this block uh, with the true value of open. At the same time, this is effect, uh, remember, that when we are re-rendering the component, we are re-executing the function. So we are executing the function and returning a new uh, set of components, yes, but we are also re-evaluating all the hooks. And in this case, we, we have a use effect that uh, depends on open. Open now is true. It was false before, so the effect is executed will be executed right now, or it will be scheduled for execution. Oh. Will be scheduled for execution. And uh, after 500 milliseconds, this set open will become false again, or will be scheduled to become false again. Right? And uh, um, so basically, uh, open will stay true for 500 milliseconds and then will become false again. So it's a sort of a, a button where we are waiting, where we are showing something, some go, that only lasts 500 milliseconds and then it becomes stop again. We click on stop, it becomes go for a while and then uh, stop again. Hmm? There's another side effect that uh, we have well, implemented here without intention probably, is that after the 
uh, boolean value becomes false again the component is re-rendered of course because we change our state it becomes a stop again but in the re-rendering of the, the second re-render component when the state becomes false again this effect is fired a third time because open has changed and we, it became from true to false so actually this function is executed every time open goes from true to false and from false to true it will run once at the beginning okay we schedule a change with no effect then the user clicks becomes true the effect is fired the execution of the effect will set um, the state to false again and the state change induced by the callback will re-execute uh, this code again in this case it will have no effect because after 500 milliseconds the state is already false and will be set to false again okay we are just wasting some some cpu time we are not changing anything but uh, whenever we have an effect that depends on a state and changes the same state we should be careful because we may trigger ourselves by changing state by changing state and the state change will trigger me again and there's a risk of an infinite loop if instead of a true false i would have here an increase over the state count equal becomes count plus one and they depend on count this will run forever continuously re-triggering itself and re-rendering itself okay so um, it's not a proper infinite loop but it's, a comp it's an infinite scheduling of the and re-rendering of the component hmm? that usually is not something that we know that we want hmm? um, so we we are on one hand we need to include the uh, open in the dependency list uh, because uh, in some way the implementation of the uh, of the hook uh, depends on that state on the other hand we should be careful how we change it so in some times it would be wise in this case uh, or in a more general case not here to put an if here if the state is true then i schedule it becoming false if it's false i don't do anything Okay, so um, sometimes we need to do something when a state uh, gets a certain value. The fact that I'm triggered whenever the state changes to any value. So I maybe I want to filter some values are interesting to me, and if the state becomes a given value, maybe at least becomes empty or something like that, then I do something. Otherwise, I just don't do anything. The callback will be executed by but i will not do any modification to the state or any modification to the render um, okay so this is what i was saying here if i have variable that always change when executing the effect we have an infinite loop and we should avoid that and then we have the more general case that we already used the last time and we see some <laughs> details today of using an effect uh, to load some external data so what we did last time basically was to have we have a fetch inside an api function and this fetch uh, okay uh, was loading some data and at the end we are waiting for the response we are extracting the data from the response and at the end we are setting a state based on the response itself so uh, in our example it was easier because we didn't have any dependency we only had to run the query at the component mount time just to load the initial set of, uh, of answers or questions hmm? um, this is a, a bit a more complex uh, uh, say example where the set of values that we want to run or do we want to read and uh, to render down in the in the rendering part of the component depends uh, on uh, um, on a variable query for example and query is extracted from the props of the component ok 
Okay, so these are the structuring statements we are, I'm assigning to query props.query in, in the parameter of the function. So I have a component that can be updated. I'm not destroying or recreating it, but the same component stays and maybe the query changes. So maybe if, if you are implementing some sort of uh, autocomplete uh, functionality, you, know, you are writing into a text, uh, text field and then you have a suggestions component below. And whenever you change the, 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 the value of the field, the suggestion should, should be updated. If you don't change anything, there's no need to update the box below, the suggestion below. If you are changing something, you need to rerun the query and adapt the component. So the component always stays there. I'm not destroying it or recreating it. It always stays there, but these props are changing continuously. And every time a prop changes, I want to fire an effect that will load a new set of you know, queries or uh, com completions or set of values to be displayed by the component itself. So it will run once, and it will also run every time this property, which has been set as the dependency of the effect, uh, has changed for some reason. Okay? So we, can, we may depend on props, we may depend on states. Or we may depend on values computed from props and states. That's it. Or context, which is a form of state, or route parameters, uh, which are a form of states also. Hmm? So all the variants of state can be uh, in a dependency array, or any value computed from those. Okay, uh, just remember, and we see maybe an example uh, in our code in a, mem in a moment, uh, that uh, this code will be executed, this uh, return uh, this body, this rendering part, is rendered at least, uh, at least twice. So first, when we mount the component, we have an empty state here, and we are rendering the body with the empty state. So employees, the first time, is empty. Always, when we create the component. Then a, a component creation time, you are also scheduling this effect that in a short time will update the state again with a maybe real value. And then the component will re-render and we show the updated values. Okay. So we should always be ready when we are loading some data asynchronously that we have a first, first render when the data for sure is not available yet. So a component may assume that the, its properties are always available. But if it's loading something asynchronously, or if the value of the property itself has been loaded asynchronously by the father component, then that value can be empty, or undefined, or an empty array, depending, or an empty string, depending on what it is. Because at the first render of the whole application, or the whole page, uh, the, um, the component will always be rendered with the default states. So we should be careful in our implementation so that it, it can also do, do something meaningful. Than, let's say it shouldn't crash if we are trying to render with a default state. We know that it only lasts for a small time, but if you crash the application in that small time, then the application will not <laughs> be there anymore when the updated value um, is displayed. Hmm? I, I will show you this effect with an example that just came from, uh, from last week's exercise, uh, where we had this bug. So I just copied here in week 12 uh, an exact copy of what we had uh, last week, just to play with. Uh, let's split the terminal. Again, we go to server. Again, we need, we need to run both of them. I didn't modify anything from last week, okay? So this is our old application. Old. It's one week old. And we have the details of, a, of an answer, okay, that are rendered like this. No problem. 
But what happens if I'm trying to write something directly here instead of clicking on the home page? It's not something that users normally do, huh? but let's see what happens. So what's wrong here? If I open the console, I see what's wrong. It's telling me that props.question question is undefined. So what is happening here? Let's see the call. Let's remember what we are doing here. So uh, I'm opening up uh, in the client. Let's follow the code. We are in a route which reads answer slash two. Okay? So route answer slash two is this one that renders the answers list component by giving it questions. Question is the full list of questions. Okay? We go into answers list. What we also have here is the idea of the question that is come from the route. So we only are, we are only interested in uh, what I call my question, which is uh, the question with that specific ID. So we have the idea of the question from the router and the list of the full list of questions from the um, props, and we find the one that we are interested in. The error was not in uh, uh, answers list. The error was in uh, question details. Oh, sorry, it was in question details here. And the question details is called, uh, is rendered here by answers list with the parameter of my question. And if I go there, I see that the problem, props.question.text, for example, when props.question, it says, it says, that is undefined. The error, the exception is there. And this exception blocks the application, crashes the application. I see an empty page. What is happening here? What is happening here is that uh, we are receiving this answer list is part of is is, is uh, rendered in app. This list of questions, this component, this route is rendered twice, at least twice. The first time with the empty state, with an empty list of questions, then this uh, effect is running, will be run, and we update the list of questions with something meaningful. So this means that app is rendered twice. And in this route, since this is a, children, is a child of app, this component uh, answers list is rendered twice also. The first time with an empty, not undefined list of questions. So an empty array is perfectly fine, is not undefined. And the second time with a field array with some value. If we go inside the answers list, uh, what happens is that uh, the problem is here, where we are assuming that the right question is there. Because I'm doing a filter, and then I pick in the first result from the filter. And the first result uh, will be there if we have at least one result. Of course, I'm filtered on an ID, so we have, for sure, by definition, at most one result, because the ID is unique. But uh, what happens is the questions is empty. It's not undefined, otherwise filter would have, been, would have given an exception. Question is an empty array. A filter of an empty array gives me an empty array. So the first, at the first rendering, this is an empty array. Because questions is, props questions is. And so if we pick the zero element of an empty array, a normal language would give an exception. JavaScript doesn't. JavaScript will just return undefined. Okay? So I'm setting my question to undefined. At yeah, the first render. At the second render, my question will become the real one, the good one. Okay? The problem is that I'm doing something that crashes the application if 
and when my question is undefined. I should avoid that. Okay, so it's some extra reasoning that we have to do. We should render the component in the normal case, but also ask ourselves, uh, but what happens the first time? Can we render something without errors? And uh, yes, we should, we must. Huh? Otherwise, we are ready for maybe 10 milliseconds later to uh, populate this, but the application already crashed, the JavaScript already crashed, so there's no update. Hmm? This doesn't happen, by the way, if we go through the home page. If we go through the home page, also this page is rendered twice. Okay? The first time with an empty array, so this table will be empty, and the second time with the real value. The good part is that this component, the component rendering this, works fine even if, with a, even if I give it an empty array. It doesn't do any special case that we crash it when the array is empty. If we want to see this phenomenon better, one trick is to slow down the server. So how can we slow down the server? And we can put a middleware that adds a delay to our answers so that we can see them happen later on and it's easier for us. So we can define a simple function, delay. Uh, remember, uh, the middleware in, uh, we are in the server here in Express. A middleware is just a function with three, three parameters, request, response, and next. And this function may modify or work with the request and the response, and finally should call next uh, to let the Express continue the processing of the request itself. So what we can do is just, uh, just call in next. So if I call next, uh, this will be a do nothing middleware. We'll just go through, but what I can do is to delay this next. Maybe I, I'm making a very slow web server that takes always at least one second to respond, okay? Uh, so it will be a set timeout where the callback is calling next after one second. Okay, remember to set the callback and not, not calling next uh, right away. So let me more explicit with a couple of braces. And so uh, this is a, a simple and stupid uh, delay that we can inject uh, into our application. Okay, let's remember to remove it later. So if we restart the server, what we see here, I'm restarting the server, so right now every API call will be slower. I reload the home page here. You see it? When I reload the home page, I have a, a title with an empty table below. And then it's been populated. And this delay is when the fetch, the fetch call that they made to the server is waiting for the response. But in the meantime, React is not waiting. Right? React went away to render the component. And so we render it with the right content. And then if I click on details, I go to the same page as before, but now I have all the information. Why? Because while I was in the first page, I gave time for the state to be loaded. So when I go to this page, the state is already loaded. If you, if you see, I go here, I have a one second delay because every time I render this component, it will load data from the server. Okay, so let's keep this second of the day so that we can appreciate what is happening here. What I did before was try to go straight to one page and it crashed. Huh? Because, or even, even more, because now it's slower 
uh, because the uh, component did render with an empty state. So we must fix the component. This is normal, we cannot avoid that. Okay? We must fix the component. We must, uh, in a way, um, check whether some data is valid and behave differently. So one choice could be just to throw everything away and say, until the questions are being loaded, let's not display anything. It's a radical choice. Okay? But it would be easy because we just have, let's try it, uh, questions and all of it. Questions, plural, sorry. So question is an array, an empty array is falsy in JavaScript. So if the array is empty, I don't render any of this. If it's not empty, I will render the application normally. And of course it will be, it's not nice, because I have, in this case, it doesn't change too much because an empty table is still invisible. Uh, but if I go there, well, I have a problem, but I didn't uh, solve the problem anyway. Uh, why is that? Questions? I, I somewhat expected it to not to render the component. until it was okay. Questions. Uh, this question is false. No, sorry, it's not like that. If question is true, then render this, otherwise maybe render something like loading. I'm, I'm executing the right code. Questions, uh, questions. This question is true, then this, otherwise, should show this one. For one second, why doesn't it? Uh, Let's do something else. If, not questions. No. I'm sorry, I just want to be sure that I'm executing the code that I'm modifying because I don't see any. Yeah, it's there. Okay, okay, there's something wrong with. Is an empty array false or true? Is an empty array true or false? Maybe that was my mistake.
Okay. It's true. Uh, so that was my mistake. Sorry, I, I, I was, I was thinking that an empty array would have been false, uh, and instead it isn't. Uh, so it's my fa my fault. Uh, that's why it wasn't working. Okay. So the real check, for example, is uh, if the length is zero. What I'm doing here, you see, is something like that. Okay, this is a very crude, it should be, I should show something in between. But I have a way of checking, so the idea is that I have a way of checking whether the state has already been loaded or is still in progress, and they can customize the rendering according to all of that. And if I, in this case now, if I am jumping to a dir directly to an answer, I will see the same. Because even if I'm inside the route, uh, we are still rendering up. So we are doing everything we do with app, and then we render the component itself uh, below. Mm -hmm. So right now, app is waiting. It's not rendering the subcomponent until the, the, um, I don't know, the, the questions are ready or so. So usually we don't do something as much radical as this case where we blank out the whole application if something is loading. But uh, uh, if we are, we need to be sure that we are rendering something only when the data is available, we can use a trick like this. Not for the whole application, but ju maybe just for one portion of it. Okay, so this is very uh, radical, as I, as I mentioned, but it can be something like, uh, uh, I don't know, customizing the answer list uh, or showing it only if the questions are already loaded or something like that. So we have an extra choice to make uh, when we uh, thought about the components uh, you know, we discussed about uh, imagining the different states of a component what are the different states of a component we have the mode of the component at the beginning you, know, you remember um, and now we have we, that we are working with side effects uh, we should always think uh, of a component as uh, just being started so with a default value or during the loading phase or after the loading is completed. And so we should choose what to render in each case. It's not just a static uh, component with some props uh, that are already there. The props can arrive, uh, say, with some delay. Okay? Um, okay, so let's fix it maybe in the right, uh, right place here in the answers list. So let's, uh, let's uh, say, be. No, let's know that uh, uh, this question can be undefined. Okay? So it's possible that in the question details component uh, we are passing some undefined value. So maybe we modify the behavior of this component so that in the case of an undefined uh, question it does something meaningful. So for example, it writes that if props.question uh, is empty, So if I have props that question, then render this text, otherwise you can render loading. Not the whole page, but just the text where the question name would uh, have been shown. And the same here, props that question. If it's there, then display the author, otherwise display loading is one possibility. So how is this working? If I go here, uh, what did they do? Prop the props, what did they write? Prop the props question, sorry, I'm drunk. Okay, so if I load something here, I put a number, I see, you see, there was a loading name here until the question has been loaded. I load it. Look at this title here and this name here. Loading, loading, and then it becomes. In this case, uh, uh, you saw that the title of the question and the uh, list of answers appeared more clearly at the same time. Okay? That's because the two effects are being run in parallel. We have two, two use effects uh, that are doing to fetch, uh, that are calling to fetch APIs. 
The first is enough, is enough and second for loading the, the question, list of questions, from which I will de derive this title. And the second is inside the answer list, uh, from which I will populate this table. Always remember also to have the console open and also the network panel open to see what is happening, okay? So you are seeing that uh, I have an API here, get questions and get answers. And I have the response of the list of answers and the response of the list of questions. So in this case, uh, uh, Firefox is telling me that the response is low. Of course, I made it slow by on purpose. Okay, you see the, the small turtle here saying it's too slow. Also, uh, be aware of what, uh, uh, what API you are calling. If I go back and close, you see there are no extra calls here. Because the app component is still mounted, it already has an, a loaded state. If I go down into a question, into an, uh, inside a question the, uh, again, I'm calling, I'm calling uh, the list of answers every time I go into the detail because I'm storing only the answer for one single question. So if I go back and enter in again, the old values uh, are being, uh, were forgotten, and so I need to load them again. So when I go back, I don't load anything. When I go inside a, a question, this one doesn't have any answers, but I do the get any way to check the list. Okay, so in this case, this application is asking the list of answers very frequently. I'm not storing them. The component will ask the server whenever it needs them. That's one choice. Hmm? Not to make the state too much complicated at the application level. Okay, so that's the first uh, problem that we solved, solved, in a way, we managed, okay? The first render has uh, empty data. We shouldn't crash the application and we should be Render something meaningful, maybe a, wait, a waiting state, a loading state, until the real, all the data has been loaded. Mm -hmm. And remember that the data can be loaded, well, if we have different pieces of data, they may appear at different times, because they're being loaded asynchronously. So don't rely on this data being available before that other one, that other information. The state can change in every combination. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we have to do um, many more fetches. Okay, there's another detail on this uh, small code here uh, that you must, may ask yourself, but in this user effect, uh, what I wanted to do it was it to call a fetch. Actually, I didn't write the fetch here inside this callback, but I defined an extra function and then called that function. Was I stupid or what? Why do the extra work? Okay, I could have written here fetch and do the work here. The problem is that fetch is a, an asynchronous function returns a promise. So if I want to, uh, say, process the result of the fetch and want to await on this result, then this await, await fetch, must be inside an async function. Okay? A wait should always be inside an async function. And in fact, this function is async. I didn't have this problem in my code up to now because I used the then syntax for the, for the promise. So this callback is a normal synchronous function. It's not async. And, and for processing the, rest, the, the promise here, I use the then with a callback. If I want to use the await syntax, which is much more compact and useful, then I need to put um, the call of the promise, or the fetch itself, or an API that calls the fetch, inside an async function. The limitation is that uh, the effect callback, this function, cannot be asynchronous. Why? Because uh, uh, there's an extra detail about the user factor that we didn't mention uh, last time. Uh, the callback function can return a function. 
or the um, the normal we didn't sorry we didn't uh, With this line, no, uh, we didn't read this line, now we read it. The callback function may return a cleanup function. What does it mean? It means that this callback function at the end can do a return something, or if we don't have an explicit return statement, it will return undefined and we are done. But if you want, you can return something. And this something should be a function. So it's very strange. We have callback function whose return value is a function. Okay. It's another callback that will be called when the component is, is destroyed, just before destroying the component. So they call it a cleanup function because we usually, if we are maybe opening a connection to something, a, a socket or some, something like that, or a connection to a database in an effect, then we should be, when we are mount mounting a component, for example, we should be sure to release that resource, close the connection or whatever, before the component goes away, to avoid you know, uh, wasting resources or leaking resources. So we have a way of executing some code when the component mounts, I have an effect with an empty dependency, and a way of executing some code when the component unmounts, it be just before it will is destroyed. How? Well, we should return from the callback that is called the first time, basically, a, f a function. And this function should do some cleanup operations. And we need it very seldom. So in our code, when you are just doing some, uh, let's say, API calls, uh, there's nothing that remains open. Okay? So there's nothing to clean up. But uh, uh, the net uh, result is that the callback function, if it returns something, if it returns something, it must be a function. And uh, an async function returns a promise. It doesn't return a, a function. So returning a promise would not be the right type of callback, because then user effect will check the result of this function. We see that it's not undefined, but it's a promise. And we'll try to use it as a function, but a promise is not a function, so it will give you an error. So the bottom line is we cannot make uh, an effect callback like here, asynchronous itself. So you cannot put an async here in the front of the function. Because then it would return a promise. And, it, and uh, while user effect expects it to return undefined or a function, a cleanup function. And so if we want to use uh, async in our syntax, uh, we should wrap that into another function that is async itself. And we define the function maybe here, and we call it immediately. This fetch doesn't have any await in front of it. And this function, okay, is an async function, so it will return a promise, but this promise is dropped. It's not returned by the... This callback doesn't return anything. This one executes an asynchronous function, returns a promise, this promise is, is thrown away. It will be fulfilled asynchronously, but then the promise object itself is thrown away. Okay, so it's a longer trip to go. But just remember, if you want to use a weight, you need to, to wrap it into a, an extra function layer. Uh, just for this reason. So the user effect callback cannot be an asynchronous function, but may call any asynchronous function itself. Hmm? If you want to use a weight, you, you must do this. Otherwise, you, you, you can use just the, 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 the dense syntax that doesn't return anything. Yes? You cannot expect to get, sorry? No, no, in this case, this function, the, this callback doesn't return anything, okay? If you want to do something with the return value, you do it here, inside the sync, as the last step. For example, you are doing a set employees here. 
So that maybe let's use this style in the next functionality we implement uh, so we can get familiar with that. Um, okay. So, um, so let's try to you know, implement some, uh, some, more, some more functionality. And remember that uh, we should always think that the response from the server can be slow. So sometimes a slow response uh, is just easy to detect, for example, the array as a length of zero. But in other cases, we cannot just do that. Imagine we are doing a vote. We are implementing the vote functionality, okay? Vote up, vote up. And uh, uh, there's no array that is empty initial. So the vote was five, then it will become, after a time, six. What to do in, in the meantime? Or well, maybe I should render this vote with, a, with an icon, with something that says, okay, this, this is a, it's a temporary value, it's being updated. So in general, when we need to customize the rendering according to the in-progress state of an operation that can take a long time, we, in, we can track the progress of the operation with an extra state. So, for example, we have a, in this example, we have a waiting state that will be set to true when we start the fetch operation and will be set to false again when the operation is completed with after all the awaits and after we set the state. We have an effect, we fire an effect, the effect fires and the effect will run a fetch okay so when we start the fetch at the same time we set the component to be waiting okay and waiting for something so the component in some way can you know update its rendering by knowing that it's an in, in a, with an intermediate state in some way and then when the all the operation is completed and so we have the new state updated we can turn off uh, the waiting state uh, and the rendering will become uh, the normal value. Okay, so again, we have a component that may be in an intermediate state, initial state, intermediate state, so waiting for something to happen or final state. The intermediate slash loading state can be sometimes detected by a specific value of one existing state variable, like question is empty. Or, if we cannot just track one existing state, we can add an extra state that we will set to true when we start a fetch and we set to back to false when the fetch is completed. And then the rendering, of course, will display the icons, the hourglasses, or disable some text or whatever while, we were, while, while we're waiting. Okay? So, maybe let's try to, as we said, to implement some functionalities. Both is easy. No, right now it's broken because we just copied the component. So what do we need to do to implement the vote functionality? So vote is a button inside uh, inside uh, answer details, I guess. Answer details as a button renders a button vote. Uh, no, answer row. Answer row, rents a button, vote. That calls a prop uh, from above, okay? So it calls the prop uh, with an ID. In the previous version, this prop, uh, this function, uh, upvote, went back to up uh, to update the state. Uh, right now, we should, we have to uh, re-implement this. So answer row just calls an uh, uh, upvote answer, it receives an upvote uh, function. Answer row comes from uh, answer details and is uh, up and it defines itself this, uh, no, it reuses this upvote answer function. Taking from its component, its enclosing component, that is uh, answer list. So answer list 
this component here, is rendering answer details by giving it uh, an uh, upvote answer. And now we map this upvote answer to an endlevote uh, local function that previously was calling a prop from above. So now we don't need to go above uh, for uh, sending a vote, to, for uh, uh, increasing a vote. Because above, it doesn't know, uh, it doesn't have any information. Above, we have an app. Uh, app doesn't have any information about the answers. What we can do here is to call the API for increasing the vote. The score. Right? So we can implement an, 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 uh, another API and call it right from here. The vote button will increase the value in the database on the server. And then, after the vote has been increased, update uh, the value shown in the component. Because I click on vote, the server value, the API, will increase the value in the database. But the, sh the, the, the screen, the state, uh, will still contain the old value. So in some way, I, also, I should also increase the local value. Let's see these two uh, actions. So call the API for increasing the score. We had an API.js file where we were collecting all the API calls. So we must in implement an extra function, a sync function, uh, upvote, for example, with uh, the ID of an answer. Right? And this would just issue a fetch to the right API for increasing a vote. Remember, we, all, we all still have our documentation in the server of the test of HTTP where voting and answer was a post here. A post to answer slash id slash vote with a JSON body containing this word. Okay? So nice to have a, a set of test API to refer to when we are implementing them. So how can we send a post in a, uh, with a fetch method? Fetch requires the first parameter is the URL. The URL is uh, AP URL plus and uh, I use in the back tick because I want to interpolate some value into the template plus uh, API uh, it already contains API doesn't it? Yes. So slash answers ID vote. So like that. Answers is not a five, but it's the value of answer ID. So I'm calling this uh, URL. And I will provide a second uh, parameter, which is an options object. This is not a simple get, so I need to provide uh, the options object. So let's create an object that will contain, first of all, the method that should be a post. I need to send a post of a body, and the body will be uh, a JSON body. So I must set the header for specifying that I'm sending a body encoded in JSON. Headers. Headers would be an object because I may have many headers. And the others that I'm interested is content type, right? Yes, content type with a capital T. And its value will be 
application.json. I only need to set this header, I could set more of them, but. And then the body content, we should be a string encoding the object that we want to send. So we created the object and then stringify it with the json.stringify method. Because body is expecting a string. Okay? Uh, stringify any object, so we can pass here any object, it will be converted to json. And the object that we are passing is something like what? Uh, up. We are passing this object here as a JavaScript object converted to a string. Of course, we could just send this as a string, but in the most more complex cases, let's let the JSON library do its work. So this is the fetch command that the browser will, will issue for sending this post command, if I didn't do any mistake. And of course, every fetch is dangerous because I'm doing an asynchronous operation on a remote server. It can fail, it can be OK. And so we cannot just rely on sending the post. We don't have any real value to expect from the, resp from the response. But at least we should check whether the response was OK. So we should await for the response, uh, like const response await fetch. And all of these should be inside a try catch block. where we are getting the response here, and first of all, we need to check whether the um, response was OK or not. Remember, we have two levels of errors. One are network errors that we catch here, and the other are application errors that we catch here. So here we can say, if, uh, uh, if we are here, then uh, something wrong happened, so we can throw a uh, new error with the network error and the message we received, error.message. And, uh, and this network error. It may happen with a timeout, it may happen with a disconnection, with the wrong address, uh, with the wrong URL and so on. Or the post went through, but the server sent a wrong status code. So if uh, we have two cases, if the response is OK, 200 status code, I'm OK. So I can resolve the promise. Remember, we have an asynchronous function, so we should resolve the promise, return true. Else, we must reject the promise, and inside an async function for rejecting promise, I must throw an exception. So throw, new error, of type application error, and then I can give the message that would be probably in the body of the, of the response. And so in this case, I should extract the body of the response. For extracting it, I need to extract it in, uh, so let's see in the server what I'm doing in, this, in the case of errors. I'm sending uh, a post, for example. I'm sending error.message as a string here. <laughs> it's not a JSON object. I'm in the server here, okay? 
Uh, the server, when something goes wrong, uh, will send uh, a 500 code uh, with an error message in the body of the response as a string. It's not a JSON object. It's not a response JSON. I return a JSON when everything is OK. I'm returning a string where some, there's some mistake. Okay. So on the client side, in the fetch code, I can extract the body just from response dot uh, body no text that extracts the parses the body and extracts uh, the, it as a as a text okay instead of a, as a JSON object and so I can print the message here that I receive from the server. No, not print this, or I can write that in the exception. So every API call is like that. I prepare the fetch, and then I handle the results. The good code is here. All the rest is error handling. So upvote is now a function, and I can export it. And after being exported, I can use it into answers list. So call the API for increasing the score. Okay, so I can call uh, a vote with the ID. And this is a promise, of course. Uh, do I want to do something after the promise completed? If I want to do something, uh, then I can use a then or use an await here and make this callback asynchronous. There are no problems from making a callback asynchronous. It's only the use effect that has this strange limitation. Uh, and so we have the result. Uh, that in this case it's always true. But uh, since it's a dangerous operation, also on the client side, we may have some error handling. Try to do that. And uh, if it's OK, then update the component and so on. As, uh, handle the error in some way. So maybe show an error message on the interface. Right, right here, you are in the component uh, ready to render something. So if a post goes wrong, I should tell something to the user. OK, you, I couldn't send your vote for some reason. OK, for the moment, we can just maybe console.log the message, the error. At least we can debug it. But then uh, uh, put some error or a message in the page. And that would require an extra state variable with the error message itself, uh, which if it's not empty, it will be displayed. OK? at the state with the error message inside. So that the user can see it, not just the console. But if everything is OK, the vote will be updated. So let's try this part up to now. So I'm saving this. And uh, try to vote this function, this answer. So I clicked on vote. I saw the post go out. The post returned a 200 code, so theoretically it should be done. The return value, the response is uh, sorry. I don't know why it's returning this. Ah, okay, the, the, the score is returned 
it returns a new object with a score six. And if I go into database, I will see six, but here I still see five. Of course, if I go back and enter this question again, it will reload the new value with six. So, but if what again, I don't see the seven. Of course, I still have to update the front end of the application. There are several ways of doing that. Okay. One way, which is the safest, is to reload all the state. I modified something on the server, let's refresh the page. So, we know how to do it because we did it here. We call the list answers again. So we have the updated list. Call it the list answers and then set state, set answers with list. So I'm doing a call that way may modify the state to be on the safe side, let's reload the state from the server. And so what, what I see is that I click on vote, and after a while, an eight appears. Now it's taking two seconds, one for the post and the other for uh, the, the list, just because we have, we have this delay. So the in user interface is updated. It's a costly update in a way, okay? Because I'm reloading the whole the whole table. So let's check the other question. When I have many answers, maybe I could have many more. If I click on vote here, it will reload the full table. And then React is clever and it will only change that number. But from the server, I'm reloading everything. It's a safe operation. So whenever something may, may have been changed, let's reload it. It's costly because you need to do a full reload, and in a way it's, uh, it, it gives you a, a delay in the user interface. So if I click here and the server is, is low, maybe I click two or three more times. <laughs> and of course the vote will be proce processed, but if the user doesn't see an immediate feedback, he will not be sure that the operation has completed. So that's why the waiting states are needed. When I click or what I could do here, so the problem is that the interface doesn't feel responsive enough because we have to go a round trip to the server twice, actually. Uh, by the way, remember this update, this await here. Because if you forget this await, here on line 43, you are executing the post and the get in parallel. Right? And so the risk is that you are getting the full list, but it's still the old list. Because the update didn't go through yet. Okay, so it's still slower because we must be sure that the vote is being updated before rereading re the list. And so we need that to wait until the up vote has been ended. I remember that this, let's follow the chain. This await is waiting for this return. This return is waiting for the HTTP response of this fetch. This HTTP response the vote is done there. This HTTP response is generated by this race.json. Race.json, race.send, race.end, they must be there. Always remember to close an HTTP response because if you forget it, maybe, maybe you don't have any data to send 
any meaningful data to send, like here, I was just a delete, uh, there's nothing back to be sent back. But I need to close the response here. If I don't close the response, then the fetch will not resolve, and the await will stay there forever. Not forever, but until the fetch gives a timeout and generates an exception. Okay, so <laughs> every block we are we are we are nesting a lot of stuff. Okay, we have the user interface that calls the API that does its own uh, await that calls the API that awaits on fetch and fetch awaits on the HTTP response and the HTTP response is awaiting on the database again. So we must remember to close everything with a, a sequence of good results or with a sequence of errors. If there's an error on the database, I must propagate it in the HTTP response, and then I should throw an exception from the API. Fetch will throw, will, um, will give me a not response OK, and so I need to throw an exception from the Fetch API to the application that will then set a state. We are at least four levels to go every time we do something. Okay. That's not uh, my fault. I didn't invent the web. Um, so, back to our problem. How can we make this more responsive and or safer? Safer in the sense that they, want, they don't want the user to click twice just because they don't see modification so there are again several solutions one solution is uh, okay why I'm doing something I'm preventing operations so one choice is that if I'm updating something let's disable these buttons if I'm waiting if I'm loading don't do anything I will disable this button for example. And then when the data, uh, when the value is updated, then I will put them again in the normal state. This is one possibility. So to preventing, let's say, dangerous operation because uh, uh, the user is operating on a user interface which is not updated yet or is still out of date. This can be done in general so we can have in this component, oh, sorry, this is the server, sorry. In this answer list component that uh, hosts all the information, all the operations, we can have actually this uh, uh, waiting state. It's a Boolean that initially should be true. Okay, so we can set the waiting state to true or false depending on when we do some operations. When does it become false? So it's no longer waiting? Well, at the, at the beginning, when it loads the list of answers. So list of answers, set answers list, and set waiting false. So when the component is initially rendered, it will be in waiting state. Then after the list of answers has received, has been returned, I, be, I will no longer be in the waiting state. And then when I ask for an asynchronous operation, I immediately become waiting and they will, will become not waiting again uh, when the operation is finished. For example, we have the edit sorry, the, the vote. So when we, just before calling the API, say, okay, I'm waiting. And when we get the answer, I'm no, not waiting anymore. And also if I get an error, I need to go out of the waiting state somewhere, somehow. So I'm tracking whether there's some operation pending. Maybe not all of the, of the operation, only some of them.
and then right now I just set the state how can I use this state I don't know maybe the answer details can get an extra prop waiting and I pass this property down to answer details uh, I, I, I have uh, the answer row I can pass it down also to answer row uh, waiting equal to props dot waiting and the inside the uh, answer row I can maybe disable these buttons on waiting um, that's a property it's enabled or, or disabled I don't remember disabled is the opposite of waiting no it is not no it's the same as waiting props to waiting So let's see if it works. I click on vote, and the buttons gray out uh, during the wait time. So I can do, I can click on them until everything is finished, and then the maybe it's not nice to see just a way of, this, of showing that. I can gray them out by disabling, or maybe I just can in the on click uh, method. I can just ignore the clicker. There are many solutions. The important thing is that I have a time interval in which I, I know that something is in progress. And I need to handle how the interface responds to user actions in that time interval. And then after the time interval, everything will be fine again. Yes? Uh, so the question was uh, whether uh, we should have a one waiting state uh, or one waiting for vote, waiting for delete, and waiting for edit. Uh, the answer is I don't know. Uh, it depends. Uh, but the, um, to answer the question, I would ask myself, uh, uh, does it make sense uh, to call for a delete function while the vote is still ongoing? Or maybe in the other way is clearer. Why the, after they click delete, can I vote a, a function? Can I vote the answer even if it just disappears in a second? Probably not. Okay. So we let we accept one, one possible choice, depends on the application. One possible choice is that we accept user actions when the situation is stable. Hmm? And so in this case, just one waiting state in this component would be enough. Maybe it doesn't prevent other actions in the other parts of the application. So it's not a global state is waiting, it's just of this component. This component is working, so let's wait until it completes. Yes, another list, another operation, we could change uh, the user, or whatever, keep totally independent. Um, so this solves one problem, the multiple operations. I'm just forbidding that. It doesn't solve the responsiveness, because the value doesn't change immediately. But what I could do, because I need to wait until, uh, what I could do here is to anticipate the results. So here I'm repopulating the results from the real data. But nothing prevents me from uh, uh, advancing the result. I mean, I can update the state right now, right here, with an increased value. I'm, say, doing a sort of an optimistic update. I'm updating the score in the optimistic hypothesis, then the post will be executed correctly. And then, of course, if something fails, I, I need to re refresh it, uh, or maybe the, the list uh, will still load the old value or whatever. So there's 
a small period of time in which I'm uh, updating some value assuming that the server will do the same operation in parallel. If I'm really, really optimistic, I could also forget about reloading the, 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 the data. I'm, I'm telling the server, please update, and on my side, on the cloud, I'm updating too. It's optimistic. To be a bit more safe, I can update optimistically, but then check, then, then reload, then refresh the data. And for example, the optimistic update is just what we implemented the first time. A set state, set answers, with uh, an operation where we rebuild the same set of answers, but except for this one where we increase the score. Okay, so we need to do something like a, a callback function with the old answer, with the old object, and we need to rebuild a, a new object with a, well, by mapping the old object to, the, to a new set of objects, old.map. Every, every answer should return the identical object And then we modify one field, which is the um, count, score, add of score, plus one. In the parentheses, because otherwise he doesn't understand that you're just returning an object. So this should be something like that. I click on both. It's not working, okay. Uh, no, this one can be done before, sorry. Before the awaits, okay. Yeah. Now you, you are seeing some strange behavior. I click on both, become five. Okay, and then, and then it stays five. Uh, okay, I, I might put an if because I'm not sorry. All of them, yeah. So if uh, if a dot id equal to id, then return this. Otherwise, return the same object. Right. Uh, so, uh, map to A, skip, so A is the parameter, then the result is A dot ID equal to ID, return a new object, otherwise return A without any modification. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm mimicking on the client side the update that the server is doing. And I'm doing that immediately. So the value changes. And then, of course, everything else goes through. This is just a fake data, okay? It's a fake vote that after the refresh doesn't change anymore because actually the data went through. But I see that the, the user will see the results immediately. Maybe I can show, and I, I'm also showing that something is in progress with the disabling of the button, or maybe with some icon, with some other color in which I can show that something is in progress. Uh, it's up to me, it's up to the application. Uh, so we have always, whenever we need to modify something on the server, we should decide where to apply two strategies separately or independently or jointly. The two strategies are the optimistic update. I replicate on the client the effect of the operation that I'm asking on the server. And the refreshing. After an update, I are, I'm asking the server from, from fresh set of data. I can do just one, just the optimistic update, and keep my fingers crossed. 
and so my, I can avoid this part. Or I can just do that part and it will be slower, or can, I can do both uh, and I have the best of, uh, of the user experience and the safety of the result. By the way, and, uh, and then I close, uh, um, the, um, the problem here of uh, needing a refresh is not just that the post might, might fail. Okay, it might fail sometimes, and so we need to be careful. Not to take for granted that something is failed, because the user will keep on entering data and everything is, is failing on the server, the user doesn't, doesn't notice it, it's not good. But the problem is that when I have more than one user voting the same answer, so if I have two browsers voting the same answer and I'm not refreshing, I'm not seeing the, the votes from other people on the same answer. I'm still increasing account, which is no longer the real one. The server will be okay, because it will do an up every time, and there will be a single point uh, of atomic increase inside the query. It will be atomic. But the different uh, browsers will have a null value that will keep showing to the user. If I refresh it, I'm also solving that part of the problem. If, the, if there's some update coming from another user, and the browser, my browser, of course, cannot know that, the server will know that. Okay, so this was the easy function to implement, but it gave us the, I'd say, a touch of the problems. The other ones will, okay, will be a bit longer, maybe, because of the edit and the other, but uh, the, the problem will be the same, so right now we already know how to solve them. Okay, so I'm giving you some break. Why not? <laughs> <laughs>